Today we're going to introduce a special type of directed graph called a tournament. Here are three pretty succinct descriptions or definitions that tell us what a tournament is. A tournament on n vertices is an orientation of a complete graph on n vertices. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on orientations if you're not sure what that means, but all this is saying is that if we start with a complete graph on n vertices, and then assign a direction to each edge, which is called an orientation. So we assign a direction to each edge, that is a tournament. Another way to think about it is that a tournament is a directed graph with exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. So for each pair of vertices, there is an arc between them, but there's only one. So for example, the arc is either going to go from U to V or from V to U, but not both of those arcs will exist, only one. And then a third description here, which is more of a description than a definition. A tournament graph represents the outcomes of a round robin tournament, which is a type of tournament in which each team plays all of the other teams once. And in a tournament graph, each arc goes from the winner of the match to the loser. Tournament graphs were not originally studied to model round robin tournaments, but instead to model dominance in flocks of chickens. But modeling round robin tournaments with them is a natural way to think about them. And of course, it's where they get their name. To make all of these definitions and descriptions more clear, let's take a look at some examples and non-examples. So you can pause the video yourself and look at each of these three graphs and decide for each one whether or not it is a tournament. Here's our first graph with three vertices. Is this a tournament? The answer is no, and why not? Well, remember, a tournament is an orientation of a complete graph. A complete graph has one edge joining each pair of vertices, and in an orientation, we assign one direction to that one edge. So right here is the problem, because here we've got two directions going between the same pair of vertices. Looking at this version of the definition, remember, there has to be exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. But here in this graph, we have two arcs between this pair of vertices. And thinking about this as modeling a round robin tournament, this would mean that in a match, this team beat this team, but also this team beat this team. When we think of tournament graphs as modeling round robin tournaments, only one team can win each match. There are no draws. You can't have one team win and the other team also win. One team wins. There's exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. That's why this is not a tournament. All right, how about this one? Is this a tournament? Again, the answer is no. This doesn't have the problem that the first graph has. There's no pair of vertices here that are joined by two arcs. But there is a problem right here. These two vertices don't have any arc between them. Remember, there has to be exactly one arc between each pair of vertices, not two, not zero. Considering the first definition, what we have here is not an orientation of a complete graph, because a complete graph would have an edge joining each pair of vertices. And again, thinking of it as a round robin tournament, this would mean that these two teams never played each other. That's not a round robin tournament. And so it is not a tournament graph. And now how about this last graph? Is this a tournament? Nope, this one isn't a tournament either. In fact, I'm not gonna show you any tournament graphs. No, of course, that's a joke. This is a tournament graph. It would be silly of me to not actually show you a real example. So why is this a tournament? Simple. Each pair of vertices has exactly one arc between them. So it's like we started with a complete graph and each edge got assigned one direction. If we were to label these vertices and think of this as representing a round robin tournament, this would mean, for example, that team A beat team B, team D beat team B, team D beat team A, and so on. It's telling us the outcome of every match in the round robin tournament. So that's what a tournament is. I think it's a pretty straightforward definition. It's a directed graph where each pair of vertices has exactly one arc between them. 
It's just taking a complete graph and assigning a direction to each edge. What those directions are doesn't matter. All that matters is that there's exactly one directed edge between each pair. Before we cover a couple other things, you might want to take a minute and think, what could we do to these two graphs to make them tournaments? For the first graph, all we would have to do is get rid of either one of these directed edges. So if we get rid of this one here, for example, now we have a tournament. So let's change that no to a yes. And then our problem here was that we were missing a directed edge, so we'll just add that edge in here, and then we just have to pick a direction for it. Doesn't matter what we pick, let's say it goes from this vertex to this vertex. I'll draw that direction in green. So now that's a tournament, and we'll put a yes there. Here's a natural question we might ask once we start studying tournaments. How many tournaments are there on n vertices? Let's assume that we're counting tournaments with labeled vertices. So for example, these two tournaments, even though they're isomorphic, we would count them separately, since this one has an arc going from B to E, but this one has an arc going from A to B. Counting tournaments like this is pretty easy. Remember, we can think of a tournament on n vertices as beginning with a complete graph on n vertices. How many edges does a complete graph on n vertices have? Well, the answer to that is n choose 2, a binomial coefficient. Because a complete graph has every possible edge on those n vertices, so any two vertices you pick have an edge between them. That's a total of n choose 2 edges. But then, each of those n choose 2 edges, for a tournament, they'll be assigned a direction. When we go to assign a direction to each edge, we have two choices. It could go this way or this way, since there are two vertices that each edge can be directed towards. So that's two choices for each of the n choose 2 edges for a total of 2 to the power of n choose 2 possibilities. So that's how many tournaments there are on n vertices if we're considering them all to be different, even though some of them might be isomorphic. And again, this really means that we're counting labeled tournaments. Once we've labeled the vertices, there is some difference between this and this. So just as an example, how many labeled tournaments are there on four vertices? Well, on four vertices, there are a total of four choose two edges. For each of those edges, we have to pick one of two directions. So the answer is two to the power of four choose two. Four choose two is equal to six. So this is two to the power of six. And that is 64. So quite a few tournaments. Again, if we label the vertices of the tournaments, like with team names, then these two tournaments are meaningfully different. You might be rooting for team A, and so this tournament is a lot different than this one. But of course, we might also be interested in counting tournaments that aren't labeled. So tournaments that are non-isomorphic, that have meaningfully different structures. Answering that question, how many non-isomorphic tournaments are there on n vertices, is considerably more difficult. There is no known formula for this, but here are the first few cases. Notice now when n equals 2, we only have one tournament, because the only other possible tournament is isomorphic. There are two different tournaments with three vertices, and four different tournaments with four vertices. Once we go up to five vertices, there are 12 non-isomorphic tournaments. And these counts get pretty big pretty quickly, as you might expect. If there are 12 vertices, there are more than 154 billion non-isomorphic tournaments. So that's a quick introduction to tournaments. Again, a tournament is simply an orientation of a complete graph, or said differently, it's a directed graph with exactly one arc between each pair of vertices. Next, we'll talk about transitive tournaments. And if you're familiar with the word transitive, you might be able to guess what a transitive tournament is. And the first theorem we'll prove about tournaments will be about transitive tournaments. So I hope you'll look forward to that.